everyone, it's Phil Jones from Rejected Reviews. And joining me is Sasha Oshachi. How are you today? I live in the dream. Thank you so much for having me. Most importantly, how are you, Phil? Good, good. And today we're here to talk about screens. I stress heavily all the time that there's more to a system than just the projector. What has a big impact on your overall performance of your projection system is your screen. Screen Innovations is one of the leading screen companies. So Sasha, can you talk a little bit about Screen Innovations and what makes you guys so special? Absolutely. So Screen Innovations was founded way back in 2003 here in Austin, Texas. And we're known for making high performance projection screens, as well as some really incredible fixed and motorized frames. And we have a very simple but specific philosophy with any product that we approach. What does the world want? How do we make it better? Or quite simply, how do we move the industry forward by innovating to ensure that our clients can get an unmatched experience? So there are definitely a couple of ways that we accomplish that. Number one, we have one building. And in this building here in Austin, we do everything. We have our office here. We have our production here. We have our fabrication, our powder coating, our tech support is here, quality control, even I'm here. And so because we're doing absolutely everything in house, we're able to quality control every single step of the process. So whether it is our patented screens or the motorized side of things, the experience is completely unmatched. I want to talk about a few of those things. We were, you were talking about in-house. There's other companies that sell screens, but a lot of times what you're buying is a piece of vinyl that they bought for somebody else that they call a screen. It really wasn't optimized yeah. for, for screens. So talk a little bit about that too, because that's actually a really important point. And that's one of the reasons why you pay a premium for screen innovation screen. Well, no doubt. And again, the whole theme of what we do is attention to detail. And that means that we can't just do off the shelf stuff. That's why within our fabrication area here in Austin, Texas, we go and create everything from scratch. All of our engineering is done here. We do a ton of testing before we put it out in the market. And again, it's not about doing the bare minimum, but it is about maximizing the performance, not just the quality of the visuals, but long-term durability. So we have custom extrusions with our chop shop. We have our in-house powder coating machine. There isn't one specific thing that we do, but when you combine all these little elements, all these little details, that's how we're able to get that experience that we're looking for. And the fact that you can optimize, you can choose a screen that's optimized for your needs. Because how many different materials do you guys have available? Oh. Oof. There are quite a few materials that we have. And I'm trying to think, I mean, I off the top of my head, I can think of like 13, 14, 15, but it, it of course can get a little bit overwhelming because there's so many different choices. But mm -hmm. the most important thing when specifying the material has to do with almost the naming of two-piece projection, which in a way is a bit misleading because when people mm -hmm. think about two-piece projection, we typically think about the projector, sure, and then we think about the screen material. Absolutely. And of course, you have to have those components. Make sure you have great cables, upgrade your sound system, do all that. But Phil, I kind of wish that this was referred to as three-piece projection because the single most important thing is understanding the room environment. Without understanding the room environment, we really cannot pick the right screen material, pair it with the right projector. Because once we know the room environment, we can ensure that every customer is getting that beautiful experience that they can go and rave about to all their friends. Exactly. And, and, that's, a, and that's the reason why there's so many materials. Everybody asks, why are there so many materials? Because <laughs> right. uh, are you putting your speakers beside your screen, behind your screen? Is there lights on the ceiling? What type of projector are you using? Is there lots of light? Is your projector very good at doing blacks but not very bright? Is your projector really bright but it can't do blacks? All of those things dictate what type of material we're going to talk about. Now, today, we're going to talk about um, the material that, that I think is one of the coolest because we mentioned that there's three parts to this system, the projector, the screen, and the room. And a lot of times to get the best performance for, from the room, we recommend that the room is completely dark. But many of us do not live in caves with no windows, with black ceilings, black walls, and black floors. That's not the normal situation. And Sasha, you guys have solutions to overcome um, ambient lighting, correct? 
Absolutely. And I'm so happy that you brought up those dedicated media rooms because, of course, those do exist. And quite frankly, the perfect screen for that will just be any of the white and gray screens. A white and gray screen is going to work perfect in a room that is completely devoid of any light. So you painted the walls and ceilings black. There's no direct light, no ambient light for the windows. Yes, white and gray screens are going to work beautifully in that environment. But as soon as we start introducing the conversation of light, whether it's light from the walls or from the ceilings or from the windows, because maybe we have a makeshift media room in a living room, we really need to talk about ALR or ambient light rejecting screens to give them the experience that they really want to have. You don't just have one of those. So let's talk about some of the solutions you offer. So what would you like to talk about first? What are, let's go through the different options that you have. You know what, let's, I think, let's go ahead and start with what we're probably known for. And that is going to be this one right here. This one is the Black Diamond, which is really what put us on the map. It is the leading ALR uh, screen material in the entire industry. And it rejects light from both the horizontal and vertical axis. So pretty much no matter where the light is going from, the Black Diamond is gonna do a marvelous job of rejecting that light. The kind of ALR technology we're using on the Black Diamond is this sophisticated thing that you're seeing right here, optical multi-layered ALR, where there are multiple optical layers that do a phenomenal job of taking no matter where that light is coming from and moving it away to give you that clean and crisp image. But of course, we want to make sure that we have other options because maybe a client wants to go even bigger, or perhaps a client wants to put an ALR screen into space. Let's mm -hmm. talk about that really quick. Back in 2015, NASA came to us and said, screen innovations, our cosmonauts floating around the International Space Station, <laughs> they are communicating with their family and talking to NASA and watching Star Wars on 13 inch monitors. Is there any way that you can create something for them? So we launched the Slate, which um, I guess still is the first and maybe only screen that is in outer space. And so I would imagine if the slate is good enough for NASA, it's good enough for planet Earth. But the slate is yeah. a marvelous secondary choice for clients that want to go big. In fact, the slate can go up to a whopping 375 inches on the diagonal. So your clients will never go to a movie theater ever again. Well, that's neither here nor there, but they will absolutely love the experience. And we have that there. So those are probably the two most popular ones that we have. Yeah. I actually have a slate in, um, in my media room um, because it, you know, helps get over that ambient light, still offers a spectacular picture and allows me to use my projector pretty much any time um, and anywhere. Now, a couple of things about these. Um, because they're light rejecting, they only accept light from one location. If the ones he's talking about, like a black diamond or a slate, are designed to, to accept light coming straight at it. And if there's stuff coming from the bottom, from the floor or from the ceiling or don't ignore it or from the sides ignore it now that works really good if you have a traditional uh, projector well if you have a traditional projector even a, a projector with a short throw lens however yeah if you have a ultra short throw lens the projector which uh, projects light from a steep angle from below and guess what that screen is going to do it's going to ignore it so, Sasha, yeah. you guys have a solution for ultra short throw projectors as well, right? Absolutely. And we're seeing more and more uh, customers are moving away from the dedicated media room where now they're putting their all their experiences into a living room. And of course, you know, those uh, projectors that float in the air, they're definitely not too bad. But sometimes maybe you want to have the projector blend into the furniture, disappear. So ultra short throw projectors are becoming more and more increasingly popular. So, Phil, as you mentioned, doing a traditional ALR material with an ultra short throw projector is not going to cut it. So mm -hmm. we came out with a material called the, I know, not the most creative one, but you'll remember the short throw. So effectively, <laughs> when you're looking at it, from the front, you're seeing this. However, as you angle it down, this is what's happening with the light on the projector. That is what's ensuring 
that it's rejecting the ambient light from the respective and appropriate places and not from the ultra sugar projector and the way that it's angled. So between the black diamond, which is the leading AR suite in the industry, to the slate, which is marvelous and go massive, to even ultra short throw projectors, we're going to have the right solution for everyone. And if you look at the materials, the materials are all different. So depending on the solution, they actually came with a whole new material specifically to work with that particular solution. So this has got a really, these little angly diamond things. And then if you look at the other guys, there was, you know, a, a three layer, and then we get into something like a black diamond, which is a multi-layer. So there's three different solutions. Now, between the slate and the black diamond, I'm assuming that these, the, the black diamond is the most effective when it comes to, um, to rejecting light, but you can't motorize it, correct? That is correct. You're, no, you're absolutely correct. Due to the rigidity of the way the black diamond is created, we cannot have it in a motorized frame. So in a fixed frame, it'll be wonderful. And that is, in fact, going to be the best performing ALR screen that we offer. But the good news is that, sure, the slate isn't the black diamond because, let's be, be real, what, what is? But the slate is also incredibly wonderful. It can go big. And whether you have a fixed frame or a motorized frame, the slate will be the right solution there. Then, of course, if you have an ultra short throw, that is where the other solution comes in. Um, and that uses a different material to just experience of light coming from the bottom. Now, I will tell you the cool thing about these um, screens that reject light coming from the bottom is they work really, 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 really good with ambient light because they know it's coming from a particular angle. Most of these projectors have a um, a basic distance. They're going to be, you know, seven inches to maybe eight, well, I don't even say 14 inches from a hundred inch screen. So they pretty much know where that angle is going to be, give or take a few degrees. And they say everything else, make believe it's not there. And um, yeah. you'll be amazed at the fact that all of a sudden um, it becomes a TV replacement solution. Now, there are yes. other companies that make um, ambient light rejecting screens, but things such as viewing angle, can it give you an even grayscale? Does it mess with your colors? You know, all of that stuff is things that are going to make the screen cost a premium. And, and you're absolutely right. And that's where the whole doing everything custom, starting everything from scratch, manufacturing it, having all the research and development. Yes, it takes a long time, but the end result is completely undeniable. It's even from the standpoint of making sure that the actual material of the screen is about nine times finer than what you'll find that's out there. And it may not be something that you notice at a glance, but because it is so much finer, the material is smoother. And because it is smoother, the image is gonna pop that much more. Again, when we're adding up all these little things, there's really nothing that you can get anywhere else because of all the attention to detail that we're able to do. Uh, one thing that I hate about um, average screens is hotspot. So can you talk a little bit about what a hot what hot spotting is and how you can kind of achieve have an ambient light rejecting screen without getting these hot spots on the particular screen? Absolutely. So we have to make sure that we're specifying things appropriately. And by the way, if you're new to screens, it can be a little bit overwhelming, or at least seems that way, because there are so many little things to remember. The good news is before we're out of here, I'll show you some of our tools that take all the guesswork out of how to properly specify things. But essentially, if you have a projector that's a little bit too close, especially to an ALR screen, what you may experience is a little bit of hot spotting. So essentially, a part of the screen is glowing a little bit more than the rest, and it is visually distracting. So mm -hmm. there's a very simple formula to make sure that your screen will never hot spot. Write it down. This is calculus. You take the width of the screen in inches and then multiply it by 1.5. That mm -hmm. will be your minimum throw distance on the projector. If you forgot mm -hmm. that, just simply rewiden this, take notes, and you'll be totally good to go. So we've talked about all of the different materials. Now you also have some other materials that, just real quickly, talk about a gray screen and a white screen. What's, what's that? Absolutely. So as we mentioned in the very beginning, whenever you're in a totally light controlled room, a white and gray screen is gonna perform, perform beautifully. And in fact, our reference white material is this one right here, which is the Unity. 
which in a fully light controlled room will give you the most flawless color representation. And again, in a totally light controlled room. So that way you get to really experience what the costume designer and cinematographer wanted you to have in mind. So a white screen is gonna be your, typically your positive game screen. So overall, we'll make the image a little brighter. Your negative game screen is going to make your overall image a little bit darker. Now, the way that you know what screen to do in what environment, we have our tools and that will take all the guesswork out of it. Now, one other thing I do want to mention, because we can also use an ALR screen in a room that is a fully dedicated media room, because those white and gray screens in a dark room will create a bit of that glowing effect, which may not be a huge deal, but it's worth noting because that way, as the room kind of glows, the light can reflect off the ceiling and the walls back onto the screen, changing the coloration a little, little bit. Well, the beauty of an ALR screen is that inside of a dedicated media room, it will either substantially minimize or even in some situations, completely eliminate that glowing effect. So although we typically think about ALR whenever there's a lot of ambient light, even in a dedicated media room, they're gonna have their place as well. One of the videos that I wanna do is we're gonna take a piece of material and I'm going to um, calibrate a projector and then on that white piece of material, and then we're gonna take that white piece of material into a variety of different spaces, um, red rooms, tan rooms, blue rooms, gray rooms, and we're gonna measure it again to show you how much the impact is of that light hitting that screen, striking the screen, striking the walls and coming back on the screen, how could that impact, uh, impact your color? So having an ambient light projecting screen basically takes the room out of, a lot of the room out of the equation. So you want a gray room or a black room, but your wife wants a tan. That's one of the benefits of having this. <laughs> yeah. You can still get good blacks in that room because the light strikes the screen. Even with the lights off, it's those tan walls or beautiful, you know, red walls, it comes right back on the screen and everybody's got a sunburn. So, so, um, so those are some, that 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 yeah, well, so. I'm, I'm so thrilled that you brought that up, Phil. And simply because again, this is a big reason why we do all this custom stuff because we are accommodating for all these little permutations. We'd love to believe that every single person will have a dedicated media room, but the reality is there are so many varying conditions. We wanna ensure that there is something that's gonna be perfect and magical for every single client. That's how we do everything here, and we have all these different options. So if you're looking for an ambient light projecting screen for like a home or even a professional application, they got you covered. And then also, what do you put that ambient light projecting screen in? I am a big fan of the Solo Pro two pieces. Why? Because they're beautiful, they're simple, and you can even get them in a battery. So what's that right there you have in your hand, young man? Is that the case? So right here. Oh, you flatter me so. So this is a very, very, very miniature version of the Solo Pro 2. The real thing will be a little bit bigger. Don't get too excited, ladies and gentlemen. But it's technically very, very, very small form factor. And all you gotta do, just keep extending it, keep extending it, and we can go up to 160 inches in the diagonal. The reason people love this so much, not only is the form factor so small, but this is in fact powder coated. And remember how I mentioned we have a powder coating machine here in house? That's where we're doing all of our powder coating, 12 colors to choose from. If you'd rather it blend in with that cool white or make a big statement with that Ferrari red, is that Ferrari red? I don't know. I'm colorblind. Whatever. Make sure that <laughs> it's right for you. Either have it blend in or make a statement. Such a great way to personalize it. Also, easy to move it from room to room. So if you have brackets in multiple places, just go take it from point A to point B. Voila. Simple and easy. Yeah. And that's what I like about it is I have brackets in my in my lab that I have a, a Solo Pro 2 with um, an ultra short throw screen uh, material in mm -hmm. because I needed a matte white screen for um, just taking measurements, but then you want, it's good to have that ultra short throw dedicated screen when I'm reviewing all of the different projectors. And I brought in Optimus, Epson's, um, the big Sony's, um, the, the, high, the LG's, the high senses, and all of them look great on, on a ProSolo. And if you want it to, guess what? When it's done, it disappears. A lot of these come in, oh, yeah. Projecting screens, but the problem is, it's still, when you turn it off, a big white screen on your wall. So it's not, it doesn't disappear. And by having um, like a solo, you can hit a switch and it disappears. The other thing that I liked about it is one of the most, the biggest expenses to installing a projector screen is running the power to make it go up 
and down. And they got rid of that because you can actually get this sucker with a lithium ion battery. So basically you put the you put the uh the uh the screen on the wall, you, you put the brackets on the wall, you clip it in there, you charge the thing, and it'll go up and down for what a year or so before you even get you can, have to worry yeah. about charging. We're really under promising over delivering. We say about a year, but we've done a lot of testing as of so many of our dealers and end users, depending on usage and size, you could even get a year and a half to two years per charge. Of course, we will ship it to you fully charged. This is exclusive to us. It is patent pending. It seems like such a small thing when it comes to simplicity, just go plug it in. You're done 46 hours. It's all you need. I absolutely love the thing. I think it's one of the coolest uh, applications out there. And of course, you. if you're looking for more traditional screens, um, you can get lots of cool fixed screens with um, zero edge. You can do you can do the night the felt type if you like more traditional home theater screens. They have all of the different solutions that you need. So now we can spend forever talking about um, um, screen innovations list of screens, but I suggest that you mentioned you had tools. Can you talk a little bit about the tools? I would love nothing more. And this is going to be a lifesaver for people that are relatively new. Because if you've been doing screens for a long time and projection, and you've been doing AV, this all becomes second nature. But as you know, we have so many different screen materials, so many things to consider. You have the distance, you have to have the minimum and maximums. It can be overwhelming. However, I'm gonna show you how we can take all the guesswork out of specifying the right screen material every single time. So beginning at screeninnovations.com, take make your way to the top right corner where you can find our tools. Although we have a bunch of different things that will make your life as easy as possible, the major one is going to be the screen material wizard. So once we click on the screen material wizard, here's what you need to know. By the way, if you're in a fully dedicated media room, you don't have to use a screen material wizard because in that situation, when it's total light controlled, you can get any one of our screens and everything will function beautifully. As soon as the conversation of light is whispered in your direction, you must use the screen material wizard to ensure that we're providing the best experience possible. Here's the information that you need. The unit of measure, eh, inches or centimeters, do what's right. Uh, do the screen size, either diagonal or width, Either one is completely fine. So let's assume 130 inches. Make sure we have the appropriate aspect ratio. So figure out what kind of content they're observing. Maybe they're just doing their everyday television, watching their uh, streaming devices. And then we also have to know the projector lumen and most importantly, the amount of ambient light in the room, the foot candle reading. So let's assume that all of this is correct. Well, that 500 lumen projector may need a bit of an upgrade. More on that a little bit later. If you take a look at this screen right here, we can see everything that's highlighted in green. Everything highlighted in green is going to give you a great experience because what we're looking for is a system contrast ratio of 30 to 1 or better. If it's 30 to 1 or better, we can guarantee that the experience is going to be completely unmatched. So assuming this room environment, we can see that everything from the slate 1.2 all the way to the black diamond 1.4 will give a great experience. Down here, however, we have the slate 0.8 at 27 to 1. Notice that that one is gray. So it's not to say that this won't work. It will. But what we're really trying to do is maximize the performance for our customers. So make sure it's in the green. Now, a couple of things that we didn't do. Number one, this is critical. Make sure that you take out your trusty foot candle reading machine, or if you have an iPhone or Android device, you can download the app. Make sure to take the measurement, and it's going to be done from where you're going to be installing the screen. So basically facing the projector or facing where people are going to be sitting, make sure that you're taking the measurement. This is incredibly critical because depending on what this measurement is, will drastically change the end result. So let's say that you take the foot candle reading and it's in the living room and you see that it is in fact seven foot candles. You would take this drop down, bring it to seven, and now take a look at this. Assuming seven foot candles and a 500 lumen projector, there isn't a single thing that we can recommend to give your clients that great experience. Even the Black Diamond, the greatest ALR screen in the industry is not within that 30 to one or better. This is a big deal because this should prove to you that here at Screen Innovations, we're not just trying to sell you a product. That is not our goal. Our number one goal 
is making sure that you can provide your clients with the best experience possible. And given this parameter, there's nothing that we can recommend. However, time yes. for an upgrade. <laughs> time. <laughs> time for an upgrade. So where can we upgrade here? Your, your, your three gun CRT needs to be upgraded. Okay. This looks <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think, Phil? Instead of a 500 lumen projector, what are we upgrading to? What kind of lumens are we talking at with uh, this one? Well, well, actually, now, because I'm a geek, we'll say 2200 lumens. How about that? Ooh, I love that. Wow, what an answer. So all of a sudden, with 2200 lumens and seven foot candles of lighting in the room, we can do anything from the short throw material, if you're using the ultra short throw projector, or the black diamond. However, maybe the clients also decided to get our Sweet Innovations blackout shades and were able to bring down the foot candle rating, let's say from seven all the way down to one. Now, all of a sudden, every material that we have to offer from the industry leading black diamond all the way down to our pure gray or solar gray, everything will work. Utilize this tool. You actually just did a little segue there, young man. So we were talking about the fact you can increase your performance of your room by better lighting control. Lower that amount of foot candles, the lighting, they have the light in the room, and you get more performance from all of your screens, which is why you guys also offer shade. So can you talk a little bit about your shade solution? I would love nothing more. So once again, just like with our screens, we're doing all of our shades in-house. In fact, this is all done in the exact same building. And what we wanted to do when we got into shades is really get a lot of feedback from the industry, from people that have been doing this for decades, for, for from clients that have been enjoying their shades for a long time. And what we tried to figure out was what were certain common themes that kept popping up? We kept hearing about the form factor. We kept hearing about the size and color. We kept hearing about installation and integration. And these were all areas of, let's just say, concern. So we have the smallest shades in the industry. They are the only ones that are powder coated. And we have a ton of great technologies that simplify your life when trying to install while also making sure that your clients get something that is magical and beautiful. And I can't wait to talk about it more very soon. Yes, we are going to talk a little bit about the shade solutions um, in a second video because we're trying to make this one a little shorter. But they have a variety of different type of shade solutions, whether you're looking for um, blackout, you know, screen, whatever you're looking for, privacy, um, but everything else. But by combining their know-how and making good material, good screen materials go up and down. So guess what? If I can motorize a 200, 170 inch screen, I can motorize a set of shades. So and by the way, if you like, that. if you like the way our Solo Pro 2 looks, you're gonna love the way our shades look because spoiler alert, they're the same. Exactly, and 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 um, and a lot of some of the other cool things such as the control and even the batteries are offered on certain sizes of the shades. So Sasha, thank you very much for coming and My talking pleasure. about um, who SI is as well as some tips and some of your options for ambient light rejecting screens. So Absolutely. take care everyone, and we shall talk to you next time.